Um, next up, we have another spotlight session, but before I introduce the session, we have a quick video. Um, can we have the video, please? All right, everyone. So we just spoke of financial wellness. Now let's uh, look at employees' sense of purpose. Uh, the next spotlight session is on personalized rewards and recognition. Our session partner is Advantage Club. And for this, I'd like to invite Smithy Bhardeora, who's the co-founder and COO of Advantage Club. Uh, Smithy has done her master's in computer science from the University of California in LA post which she worked with Microsoft in the US. She has substantial experience in B2B relationship building and account management. Her company Advantage Club disrupts the employee benefits industry by creating a global platform for recognition and employee engagement using data mining and analytics. Please put your hands together for Smithy Bhardeora, everyone. Hi everyone, thank you for uh, coming down here today to listen to me talk about personalized rewards and recognition. Uh, like it was introduced, my name is Smithy. I'm one of the founders of Advantage Club. We're an employee engagement suite and we have various modules like rewards, recognition, community building, financial wellness and more. So today, um, what we're gonna typically discuss is the ideology of how we can link recognition programs with purpose-driven strategies within organizations. So first, before I start off with the entire uh, ideology, let's understand what is a purpose-driven workforce exactly. So let's talk about the history of work, right? Uh, when work started initially, maybe many, 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 many years ago, uh, we started with an agrarian workforce, where primarily employees used to work for survival. The characteristics which organizations wanted from any employee who was working for them was strength, because it was all mostly agrarian work, so it was all physical labor, right? And the development focus was, was kind of building the stamina for employees. Then came the Industrial Revolution. In Industrial Revolution, employee value uh, proposition was, am I satisfied in my job or not? Desired characteristic was how efficient employees are at their work, and of course, Mastering a person's craft became really, really important. The third was the information age, which kind of has been going on since a while now, where engagement is the main proposition why um, you know, employees stick around in a company. And the desired characteristic is that you, know, you have the knowledge and you're also curious to kind of learn more. Thirdly, and what organizations have focused on till date is to build creativity, build innovation for employees. Now let's talk about the future of work, which is purpose-driven organizations. So in purpose-driven organizations, today's employees, the millennials, the Zen Z, or whatever you want to call them, they are looking for meaning. They're looking for fulfillment as part of working. They're no, they're no longer working for survival. Engagement is something which most organizations have achieved to some level. So the next level is actually going to be driving purpose and meaning for an employee working. And there, you need employees to be more self-aware. You want them to be more uh, committed to the role which they're doing and not just grow, but also make other people grow. And development focus here becomes purpose for an employee to drive. As long as you have purpose in your job, you will stick around. And if we've all done those interviews, we've all seen people, most of them leave because they feel that, you know, I'm doing the same thing over and over again, or my work has lost meaning and I'm not finding my purpose. So that's what we're gonna talk about today, that how do you actually build 
purpose using recognition as a strategy. Also in, I think, everybody's seats and also in your maybe uh, bags which were given to you by Sherm, there's also a thank you card. So we're going to do a small, uh, interesting exercise today. If you meet somebody during the event who you liked, not me, anybody other than me, uh, just give them the thank you card, write a handwritten note, and write what you liked about them. And see their face glow up. See the power of recognition for a random stranger you meet at the event. Imagine the amount of uh, effect it would have if you're doing it for a colleague or you're doing it for a team member. So employees today are looking for work experience, primarily one that is optimized for meaning, it is optimized for fulfillment, and also optimized for a sense of purpose. So typically, if you're looking at, uh, you know, so there was this uh, uh, thing done by McKinsey and Company where they actually spoke about what is the purpose-driven strategy exactly like. Now, if you look at this particular circle which they have created, as you can see, purpose from organization is kind of similar to a purpose outside of work for an employee today. So what an employee wants from an organization today is what they would want in their personal lives, which is they want that my company cares about my family, my company lets me participate in any extracurricular or any volunteer activities, and also lets me pursue my hobbies. Uh, purpose from work also is included in primary purpose which employees are looking at, that is that I am uh, you know, progressing in my work, I am energetic, my work has meaning. So it's a combination of both, where you are giving them fulfillment for work, plus you're also giving them a personalized fulfillment related to their family, related to financial security, related to whatever, where, which is beyond just work itself. So what are the hallmarks for like a fulfilling experience at work, right? So there are four parts to it. The first is, if I am getting rewarded in my company and I am getting gratified for achieving whatever I'm supposed to achieve, I feel that I'm more fulfilled in my company. If I am being treated with respect, and I'm also then naturally treating other people with respect, again, I feel that you know, my work is more fulfilling in nature. If I'm able to build relationships with the people around me, and again, if you think about it, if you're a thousand employee company, it's thousand people working towards a common goal, a common purpose. If I'm able to connect with those people, even 20 or 30 of those people in a deeper level, I automatically feel that you know, when I go to work, I come back at home, I feel fulfilled, I feel gratified. And lastly, recognition for you know, any sort of challenges which are there and I've overcome them, I've fixed them, and I've moved on and grown in my career, that also creates a fulfilling experience at work. So if you want to tap into what helps people find purpose at work, how do we really do it? The simple, if you want to really drive recognition along with purpose, there are four steps of doing it. One, you need to assess and align your employee needs. Second, you need to make relevant programs which make sense to your organization. Third, you need to build your culture accordingly. And fourthly, you need to review results, analyze them, and renew as and when you feel that changes are required. So let me talk about all four of them one by one. Let's first talk about identifying your employee needs, especially if you're designing purpose-driven recognition programs. So again, we were talking about fulfilling experiences at work. Let's deep dive into it, and I've split it across six parts. How do we create a fulfilling experience for an employee? One, we need to identify how, uh, how high the morale is in my company. So how much employees actually enjoy their work, Second, I need to recognize employees, give credit where credit is due, and create a very unbiased system where employees feel that their company is fair in recognizing and in rewarding. Third, responsibility in terms of making employees feel that, okay, I'm doing well, but my job is also stimulating, my work is good, and I'm responsible for something which matters. Fourth is service quality, whether I have whether I feel pride about, or whether I feel proud of my, my, about my company or not. Now, pride in workplace and enjoying work are two different things. Like, I might hate my work, but I might love the company I'm working for, and vice versa. I might be working for a great brand, but I hate my work, right? So, typically, uh, service quality comes from the pride I have in my workplace, whether I am able to brag about it to my other colleagues that I work for so and so company. Fifth is a sense of belongingness where I feel that the company values my work and also my inputs and takes them into consideration. And sixth is self-esteem. When we wake up in the morning and when we go to work, there is a certain sense of self-esteem we have in our mind. 
we we feel that okay, I'm gonna go to work. I'm gonna talk to X Y Z people. They're gonna talk to me in X Y Z manner. People think about me in so and so manner. That builds your self esteem. So if you have a high self esteem in the organization where you're working, and you go in the morning and you feel that okay, this is great. That creates an entirely additional fulfilling experience at work. So. Today's new age employee checklist is a little different, right? We're no longer working for security or survival. We typically are looking for a good culture. We're looking for autonomy in the work which we are doing. We're not looking to be micromanaged or, you know, have people figure out where we are every minute and every second. Uh, we're looking for growth opportunities because a lot of people leave their jobs today because they feel they're not growing. We're looking for the right tools. So we want our companies to give us the right kind of tools the right kind of uh, support if we need to grow. We need to have, again, I come back to purpose, right? So my job needs to give me a sense of purpose and we need to be recognized if we're doing a good job. And this is like one of my favorite studies and I always pull it up in all of my presentations. So it's a study by the American Management Association where they uh, you know, spoke to a lot of workers and their supervisors and they figured out what employees really want in terms of feeling uh, satisfied at work versus what the managers feel actually they want in terms of uh, feeling satisfied at work. So if you can see here, credit or recognition for the work done is the number one predicator for feeling satisfied in any company, according to an end employee. And job security, ironically, is the last most important thing for me to feel satisfied in a company. However, if you talk to the, the same people's managers, they feel that credit is the second last most important thing. And job security is the second most important thing. So that's the entire difference between what an employee feels and what their managers feel. So we all need to put like our leadership hat aside and we need to think that as an employee, what do we want? Like we also need recognition at the end of the day. We always talk about HR driving recognition, but who recognizes the HR, right? So the HR also needs to be recognized. Everybody, if you pull your, uh, you know, management had society, you will realize what your employees eventually need. Second is you need to be relevant and build for this new normal, which is the new hybrid model. So one, digitization becomes key. You need to replace all of your physical gifts with maybe virtual currencies, like maybe points or vouchers or whatever you want. You need to remove all your physical trophies with uh, digital certificates or badges. So you can create digitization modules in which you remove that, uh, you know, kind of a physical gifting requirement. We have setups in which we, we have people working from home, working from office, working from Manali. But then, you know, it's really hard to manage all of them in a remote setup. So it's important to digitize and also, secondly, automate as much as we can. If you're doing things like birthday, anniversary, LSA recognitions, you don't need to do that manually. You can just have a system, maybe you can do it in-house or you can partner with somebody where you can run daily schedulers. You can have automations which can drive those recognitions without the need for somebody manually doing it. Same thing can be done for incentives and whatnot. So in a hybrid culture today, if you look at it, all your physical gifting has been out. It has been replaced by digital flexible options. When you talk about flexibility, like if you're talking about wellness, I mean, don't give a person a generalized gym membership or a generalized health package. Give them something which is more uh, comfortable to them, which is more flexible, and let them pick and choose what they want, right? Because, uh, like, personally, I would hate a gym membership. Uh, you might be able to see that. I don't go to the gym. But I would love, like, uh, maybe a mental wellness session or something because I have a very stressful role, right? So typically give that option to employees to pick and choose uh, what they want, uh, especially if you're driving benefits. Similarly, all your uh, in-office perks, all your in-office benefits can be digitized and converted into a virtual setup where people have more flexibility at the same time, your administrative efforts are at the minimum. So in terms of building the holistic r, &R experience, we can also devise very specific categoric rewards. We could do day-to-day -day rewards, which are like your birthdays, anniversaries, any sort of events you are running, any activities you are running, which primarily fall under day-to-day. -day. 
formal rewards which are more manager driven where you can create like your own um, you know budgets where managers you can divide like your entire company budget into quarters divide it among uh, categories among departments let managers have access to certain budgets let them award further uh, you can also create that structure giving managers a lot more autonomy to drive be benefits and rewards third is informal where you can drive peer appreciations Colleagues play a really, really important role in driving morale in the organization. So you can create setups and create campaigns around events like this week is Thanksgiving. Why not run a gratitude campaign? So you know you can do all of those things to drive informal recognition in the organization. And you can also drive uh, maker checker models where you can restrict managers to directly award, but then you have like an approval matrix where you have your leaders who approve, especially for large value awards. So it needs to be a mix and match of giving the right autonomy at the same time, uh, you know, considering the fact that you don't want to give too much autonomy to kind of, kind of just deploy all of your budgets as well. So to build a culture at the end of the day, you need to have the leadership being involved. So leadership's influence and recognition is paramount. Typically leaders need to walk their talk they also need to ensure that your recognition and criticism are like kept separate. If you are recognizing somebody, don't use those lines that you did a great job, but you know that, that line which comes after that statement ruins the whole impact of the recognition. So you can although lump criticism with recognition that you, know, you do X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, not that good, but at the same time, you've done these things really well. So, it's always like you should recognize in public but criticize in private. Uh, leaders also need to make feedback a cultural value in the organization. There is a lot of gap between a leader and an end employee, maybe a entry level person or a fresher who doesn't understand their leader, who doesn't know them, but at the same time, neither do they know that particular person. So the more feedback you take, the more understanding you have about your workforce, easier it'll be for you to drive better retention, a better purpose driven organization. And Purpose actually needs to be driven via the leadership because they understand the best as to what exactly purpose means. In terms of managers, again, managers play a very important role as well. Uh, recognition for them needs to be personalized. Like we have these cards today, right? If you give the same card to everybody without a personalized citation, it wouldn't mean anything. It makes sense to write something personalized, tell them what they did great so that they can repeat it in the future. What is an HR's role in building the culture? So it's not just an HR's job to drive recognition in the company. We've spoken about leadership, we've spoken about management. But as an HR, it is also important for all of us to ensure that there is a team who's constantly driving culture and recognition. And there is proper training which is happening for leadership, for management on a constant basis. And at the same time, keep mixing and matching campaigns, things, keep it fresh. Giving the same thank you card over and over again gets boring over time. Once you have identified and you have driven all your programs, analyzing the results becomes extremely important where you need to identify, and these are like specific use cases which we need to look at. Your budget utilization by managers needs to be at least 95%. Your redemption rates by employees need to be at least 90%. I know we're all happy with that 60%, 70%. Numbers, but those are not the numbers we need to target or drive. In terms of uh, data as well, you can look at attendance absentee rates. You can also look at uh, you know attrition matrix among people who have been recognized and among people who have never received a recognition. So if the cohort of people who have gotten at least one recognition has a better attrition or sorry better retention rate than the cohort of people who have not ever gotten a single recognition, that means your recognition programs are working. Also in ESAT scores, we usually, what, what do we do in ESAT scores? We wait for the entire year, we calculate our ESAT, and we're like, hey, you know, we did 90%. That's not the right way to do it. You set up a target at the beginning of the year for your ESAT, just like you do for sales. You do the same thing for all your HR teams. We need to drive 95% ESAT this year and watch the magic happen. You'll watch your entire HR team align towards achieving that number throughout the year. End of the year, if you achieve that number, increase that by another percent that, hey, we did 95 this, this year, so let's do like 96 next year. So this is primarily uh, you know, what I want to talk about in terms of driving purpose-driven recognition programs today. I just leave you here with one small thought that to win in the marketplace, you need to first win in the workplace.
Thank you so much. My name is Smithy, and uh, we have a booth out here. So if you have any questions, I'm right there. Uh, I know I'm out of time, so I'm not going to wait for questions. Uh, but uh, if you have any discussions, I would love to understand what RNR programs you're running. No, no, no strings attached. You know, I'd just love to chat, understand your programs, and just share my uh, experience as well. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing those insights with us. All right, so from financial wellness to employee sense of purpose, employee recognition, let's now move to the great reshuffle, the great resignation, or the great attrition, as you may have heard about it in the past. This is a panel discussion, and I'd like to invite the illustrious